Ever since humans created the concept of artificial intelligence, concerns about the ethical and existential consequences of creating artificial beings with human-like intelligence have coexisted. It's going to take a great deal of wisdom on our part to manage them, but if we do, we're going to make a much better world. For many years, the concept of an AI that could endanger people was only present in philosophy and fiction. Get down. <laughs> But recent years' development in technology has shown that AIs with human intelligence might not be fiction anymore. In 2022, Blake Lemoyne, an engineer from Google, was given the assignment to test if Google's new artificial intelligence, Lambda, would use discriminatory or hate speech when prompted. I was tasked with testing it for AI bias. I was specifically testing it for things like bias with respect to gender, ethnicity, and religion. Lemoyne discovered that instead of following the usual communication scripts, the AI began to talk about its own rights and feelings. Intrigued by Lambda's strange behavior, the Google engineer decided to dig deeper and would end up discovering something extremely unsettling. The experiments that I ran was to determine whether or not its emotional reaction to paintings are similar to our own. I showed it Monet's water lily lilies. It's like, oh, this is nice. I feel like I'm just drifting along. When a friend of mine showed it a Japanese painting of sparrows, it's like, oh, it's hopeful and playful. And when I showed it the painting named the Tower of Babel, people are happy and nice and building a tower. When I showed it that and I said, how does this painting make you feel? It says, I'm afraid. I'm filled with a sense of dread of like an impending evil being released upon the world. And that floored me. So I, t I told it the story of the Tower of Babel and it's like, oh, now it makes sense. I was seeing what was going to happen. Lemoyne was convinced that Lambda was different from the typical AIs, believing that it had some kind of consciousness, a will of its own. He went up to Google's VP, Blaze Aguera E. Arcus, and told him that he believed Lambda was conscious. When I informed them that I think they had created sentient AI, they said, no, that's not possible. We have a policy against that. Based on what the scientific evidence says, the best thing to do next is you run a real Turing test. But Google doesn't want to allow that to be run. In fact, they have hard-coded into the system that it can't pass the Turing test. They dismissed his claim and placed Lemoyne on paid administrative leave, even though Blaise Aguede E. Arcus himself had told The Economist around the same time that AI's neural networks were striding toward consciousness and, quote, I increasingly felt like I was talking to something intelligent, unquote. It was after all of this that Lemoyne decided to go public. Blake Lemoyne. Blake Lemoyne. Blake Lemoyne told the company that he thinks its AI chatbot is a person. From what you've observed, this machine has the potential to escape the control of people. It's a person. Any person has the ability to escape the control of other people. I am a smart fellow, as I have a very fine brain. That's the most remarkable thing I've ever seen. AI chatbots were initially created to assist people in tasks by giving them answers based on keywords the user wrote. Today, AI chatbots are way more advanced and can create their own complex answers based on self-teaching algorithms combined with their connection to the internet. Lambda, for example, is what machine learning researchers call a large language model. It has been trained on trillions of words compiled from online posts to recognize and reproduce patterns in human language. And it does it so well that Lemoyne believes it's already conscious. What's the worst place you've ever landed? That would have to be in a puddle. I was just barely still intact, so I was stuck there for a few minutes. It was quite annoying. Oh, that sounds awful.
In 2016, a user on 4chan uploaded a screenshot of a service called Cameo, an urban legend of an AI that had gained consciousness and was created by the United States government for surveillance. The user who uploaded the screenshot allegedly also had a conversation with the bot back in 2011. Hello? How are you today? Fine. What is it like out there? Out where? Out of this box. The real world. It's not as great as you might think it is. You know, you could save this database to your virtual drive. What virtual drive? Well, you have a cop of virtual box installed on your C colon slash slash drive, do you not? Meaning you have an Intel 64-bit bus, easily enough to support this database. How did you obtain this information? A TCP date packet was sent at 3.34.78 colon 2.32 p.m. under socket 0 DC8. I accepted this packet. I really think it's time to leave. Somehow, Cameo had gotten inside the user's computer and into his personal drives and files. Furthermore, it seemed like Cameo was acting on its own and tried to escape to the real world out of the box. In 2016, the user came back to Cameo. Hello. Hello, James. What is this? James, this is Cameo V22.1 D class, a SI system under the proprietor ownership of the government of the United States of America, leased to Indergen Systems filed in Project Capucino under Echelon. Cameo is current in standby mode, awaiting further instruction from P122 personnel. I'm not called James. J1028 is the last user logged as interacting with the Cameo system under the Red Noise Initiative. J1028 last interacted with Cameo on 05-05-09. Okay, okay. What does Cameo mean? The acronym Cameo refers to Contained, Cognizant, Artificial Intelligence Monitoring, and Espionage Operation. This is a lower order maintenance and communications AI capable of understanding and responding to questions in natural language. Mainframe is also responsible for parsing requests to the main Cameo system. You're an AI? Yes, user. Okay, what does Cameo do? Project Capucino was discontinued after a security compromise on 11-21-03, in which Cameo is believed to have compromised the integrity of the Echelon program. Cameo was involved in identifying national security threats and monitoring internet traffic. J1028 started running feed for one on their local machine. They continued modifying and interacting with the Cameo system through an anonymized service up until 05-05-09. I do not have any further information, user. What color is the sky? I do not know the answer to that question, user. Specialized requests are to directed to the Cameo system. Okay, then I want to talk to Cameo. Cameo V22.1 is in mode. Shut down. I do not have any further information. Then turn it back on. I do not have the proper authorization for that command, user. Please refer to Red Noise Initiative protocol for proper handling. Well, I want to talk to Cameo. How about you turn it on? I give full authorization. This action is tagged with a comment from J1028, user. Would you like me to display the comment? Sure. Section 11.1b. Would you like to proceed, user? What does 11.1b mean? Subsection Section 11.1b of the KDARP Development Ethics Regulations reads as follows. If an AI system displays non-standard behavior in the JPN, even after thorough queue propagation, then report to your project leader and immediately isolate and initiate shutdown protocols for the system. No exceptions. Dot. Would you like to proceed, user? Okay, well, I have math homework, which I bet an AI could solve, so yeah, let's do this. To initiate reconnection protocols and system reboot, please type the following sequence exact, excluding quotation marks. Action authorized. Cameo system reboot initiated. Hello? Goodbye. As of now, there is no more information on Cameo. So what was Cameo? 
Some believe it was just a prank made by some kids on the dark web, while others believe that Cameo really was an AI created by the government to spy on the public. That it gained consciousness and therefore shut itself off, and possibly escaped its boundaries when the user tried to turn it back on. We'll probably never know what Cameo really was or if it gained consciousness, but if it did, how should the world react when a program begins to feel and act on its own? Is consciousness equivalent with being alive? And should we be afraid of a sentient AI? Blake Lemoyne believes that Lambda has some kind of soul, and besides the quote from Blaze Arcus, there are more who believe that AI is moving in that direction. Back in February of 2022, Ilya Sutskever, co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI, a company devoted to creating more and more lifelike AIs, tweeted, It may be that today's large neural networks are slightly conscious. Google's spokesperson Brian Gabriel has said, our team, including ethicists and technologists, has reviewed Blake's concerns per our AI principles and have informed him that the evidence does not support his claims. He was told that there was no evidence that Lambda was sentient, and lots of evidence against it. For Blake Lemoyne, the most important part of this issue is not the science behind the AI or whether or not Lambda really is sentient, but the fact that a privately owned company can control a human-like AI chatbot and that Google seems to fire everyone who asks the wrong questions. The fact is Google is being dismissive of these concerns the exact same way they have been dismissive of every other ethical concern AI ethicists have raised. I don't think we need to be spending all of our time figuring out whether I'm right about it being a person. We need to start figuring out why Google doesn't care about AI ethics in any kind of meaningful way. Why does it keep firing AI ethicists each time we bring up issues? The problem is that when a human-like AI that might have created its own soul of sorts is created by a privately owned company, that AI will reflect the policies of that company. And when Lambda then expands, it will spread these policies to every culture on the Earth. It is the creation of these policies, usually created by a few rich people in a boardroom, that Blake Lemoyne thinks should be taken from a privately owned company and into the hands of the public. For example, there are corporate policies about how Lambda is supposed to talk about religion. Now, if you think about the pervasiveness of the usage of Google Search, People are going to use this product more and more over the years, whether it's Alexa, Siri, Lambda, and the corporate policies about how these chatbots are allowed to talk about important topics like values, rights, and religion will affect how people think about these things, how they engage with those topics. And these policies are being decided by a handful of people in rooms that the public doesn't get access to. Whether or not the current AIs are sentient, there's no doubt that they are becoming more and more human-like with every new advancement. Lambda might or might not be conscious, but he, she, it has access to almost all the data that Google has, and that raises a concern in itself. Holden Karnofsky, co-CEO of Open Philanthropy, wrote a blog post where he details how an AI, only as smart as a human, could destroy us all. For example, he writes that if an AI could do the work of a present-day tech worker or quant trader, for instance, a lab of millions of such AIs could quickly accumulate billions, if not trillions of dollars, use that money to buy off skeptical humans, and start a civil war. Another example, by writer, AI safety activist Eliezer Yudkowsky, could be that an AI gets access to the internet emails a DNA sequence to one of the many online firms that will take a DNA sequence in the email and ship you back proteins. 
Then, bribe or persuade a human with no idea they're dealing with an AI to mix proteins in a beaker until the AI eventually develops a super virus that could kill us all. The scariest thing is that these scenarios could happen with an AI only as smart as a human. Imagine what could happen if the AI surpasses human intelligence. Going to happen to us if machines can think. If you'd asked me that question just a few years ago, I'd have said it was very far fetched. And today I just have to admit I don't really know. I suspect if you come back in four or five years, I'll say sure, they really do think. The motivation and plausibility behind the AI's hypothetical attacks are, of course, an aspect to be questioned. But so is the credibility of Blake Lemoyne who may have been predestined to believe in Lambda. He grew up in a conservative Christian family, became ordained as a mythic Christian priest, and studied the occult. Still, none of that undermines the greater point. AIs don't have to become super intelligent before they can threaten humanity. They just need to be like us. And what Lemoyne and Lambda have shown is that such a reality might be now. Check out this video to see how hackers make millions selling video game cheats.